Now, some of you may have recalled from a previous video, I bought these tiki torches. This is one of them. Uh, my wife really likes them. She likes to put them out on an RV at night, but they just don't last very long. The place we bought them no longer has them, so we can't buy any more. So I'm going to see if I can fix these. This light just has this little thing that comes off. This is actually the electronics package, which includes a solar cell on it. But then when I open it up, I mean, this whole thing has got rust in it. We're going to open this up and just see what the problem is. And when we open up, sure enough, I mean, look at that. That's full of rust from the water. And even on the circuit board, one of the leads has fallen off the LED. And this is just bad. It's just, it's all grimy and... I mean, even the battery is rusted on to the terminals. And this is after being outside about a year. But yeah, we could go out and buy another Tiki Torch, although we can't find them anymore. And if we bought another one, we'd be right back here in another year or so. So it's time to fix this thing for good. I'm actually going to spend a little more money than what this thing originally cost to make this thing waterproof enough so we're not going to fail. And here I have laid out basically all the conceivable components that you could need to replace the uh, insides of one of these. First of all, if you want to replace what was already there, you can buy a strip of these modules that comes like this. And they tear apart in little subboards like that. The only disadvantage of that is it will not fit in this potting box. And you can't really trim the board on the back any because you're going to interrupt some of the circuit traces. And if you wanted to use this, I would highly recommend using some kind of a conformal coating to at least waterproof it. And as it is with most of my projects, I also have an associated web page for this repair. And we're looking at the web page now. And as you scroll down, it shows you a set of instructions on the modifications that you have to make to the enclosure. A wiring diagram, how to assemble the board. Now this is if you were to completely build a whole new one and you may not need to build a new one, you may be able to just fix what you've got. And as well, here's a bill of materials of every part that I used. And again, you may not only need a few of these parts. And also on eBay, you can buy these already built so you don't even have to build the board if you don't want to. So again, this website is an essential part of this project. And so here's our version, along with the Made in China version. On the bottom, it has color codes for the wires. We have red, black here, yellow, violet here, and orange and green. The orange and green wires we're not going to use uh, because that's for the LED, and we're going to wire the LED directly to this board. So we don't need to put wires on. And I'm going to substitute kind of a blue-green wire for the violet wire because I don't have a violet one. So continuing on, we've wired up the board. And the board's going to fit in here, like so. And I just have a little pin vise, about a 16th inch diameter, real bit it looks like. And I'm just drilling a couple holes in here and I'm lining them up with the marks where the LED would go. And when we have our LED, we want to just put a little bend in the end. And you notice there's a short lead. And the short side of the LED is going to go where it's marked on the board C for cathode. And it's going to go in like that. Well, now comes the fun step, which can be messy if you're not careful. And I buy potting compound usually in small quantities. And this is around $9.00. And it's resealable, so, you know, you only need to use as much as you need for the day, and you're not wasting the rest of it. And you want to mix this for about 45 seconds or so. And it takes 20 hours or so for this to cure. And this kind of pours like molasses, so it takes a while. And unfortunately, you really can't see what I'm doing, but just uh, visualize, and I'm just pouring this in. And this will waterproof the electronics. And in the meantime, I've removed the mounting pad for this switch because we're going to replace the switch with a waterproof one. And I cleaned out all the little bosses and everything that was kind of an obstruction to putting the new components in. 
And this is what we came up with. I glued the box in here. And then on the back side, I just put some shipping tape on here temporarily. And then filled this in with some more of that potting compound. And then here is the top piece. I did drill a hole in here. And I just drilled a dimple in here and just put a little bit of paint in here. And that just designates the on. Now on the switch, this is a single pole, single throw. And you'll see it has an on and an off. We have it in the on position and we want it the handle to point towards that little mark. Then we have our little boot and that's our on-off switch. And this is going to be much handier because now we don't have to pull this off each time we want to turn it on and off. The conformal coating does have some adhesive properties as well. So when I put this lens back in, I actually poured some around here and glued it in and not only glued it but made it watertight. And then I'm going to use some red insulating varnish which is sometimes called Glittol. Now we continue on with a battery connector which I've soldered and also I've put some of the uh, Glittol insulation on there. And they're just going to fold over like that and then we're just going to snap them in place. And now we can feed the two solar wires through the bottom side of the top. And there's a little slot in here so we can twist the wire 180 degrees like that. And we actually want some electronic grade such as this, our TV. And we want to liberally put the silicone around the holes and then run a bead on each side here. Uh, because these, this does have adhesive properties. And then we just need to snap it in place. And we are done. Turn the switch on. And you'll see it's not on until I turn it over. And then if I take the flashlight and put the flashlight under there, you see it turns off. The Tiki Torch on the left is a new one. The one on the right is one of the originals. And the one on the left actually is much brighter. So I say this is a successful project. And we saved our Tiki Torches from the dumpster.